You know what time it is. It's Stephen King time, baby. Y'all ready to fill some Castle Rock Radio? Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Castle Rock Radio. I am Max Booth. And I am Lori Michelle. And this is the Stephen King Podcast. Awesome. And that was my phone vibrating. Ooh. Well, maybe it was something else vibrating. Ooh. That's what I like to call my Jackie Tones. <laughs> is that what it is now? <laughs> Do I got it? I got it. Do you get it? Oh, so this episode, we're going to be talking about episode one of Castle Rock season two. Yes. The television show. That'd be kind of strange if we were talking about our own podcast, don't you think? <sighs> I mean, we do that mostly. <laughs> last, uh, Speaking of talking about all podcasts, last uh, year we covered every episode of season one of Castle Rock. We did. So I guess we'll do the same thing now, That's even though crazy. not many people listen to these episodes. I don't know why. Because who wants to do who wants who wants to do that? I don't know. Nobody. Is that how it is? But I don't know. But I mean, we didn't have to read anything, and that was helpful. Yeah, we've been so busy lately. We don't. We haven't had time to like enjoy anything. I've had plenty of time, but she. Okay. You uh, you insist on just Getting... take, taking naps. Yeah. Yeah, it was the last time I took a nap. Uh, last night. That was called sleeping. Is all a difference? Yes, napping is short and sweet. Okay, how much sleep did you get? I don't know, not enough. Oh, so I guess you napped. <laughs> Episode one is called Let the Rival Run. Yes. It was directed by a man whose last name I'm not going to try to say. Yeah, I'm not going to even Greg. try to say Y- Yenetis? Yai Tennis? I clicked on his name, and it says he is mostly known for investing in Twiddle. <laughs> so you invest in Twitter, <laughs> you can become a director of Castle Rock? I mean, if you have enough money, you can direct anything. I suppose so. Really odd. Written by uh, Dustin Thomason, who is, who is one of the co creators of the Castle Rock show. Very cool. So, I mean... Season two, as we know, is a completely different plot from the original, uh, the Phil season. It's an anthology show. Each season is going to be a new story, a new cast. Very exciting. Oh, did you not know that? I did. I actually did know that. Oh, I'm fucking relieved. Are you? Uh, we have a pretty good cast this season. Uh, we have Lizzie Kaplan playing Annie Wilkes. We have... Paul Sparks, who's playing Ace Merrill. Uh, Barkhad Abdi, who's Abdi Omar. We have uh, Elsie Fischel from uh, eighth grade as Joy Wilkes, right. and he's Doddle. Yes. And then Matthew Allen is Chris Merrill, and then Tim Robbins plays Pop Merrill. Reginald. Reginald Pop Merrill. Are you going to say it that way? Yes. Pop. Every time. Yes. It's like when you say ghoulish, you have to do it that way. I don't know what you're talking about. Yes. That sounds like a different podcast. It is, but you have to go Pop. I'm never going to say it that way. <laughs> uh, Phil's impressions? I like it so far. Oh, okay. Podcast done. Yes, there it is. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I like the way Lizzie Kaplan is playing Annie Wilkes. I think she's doing a really good job with right. using the same uh, man- mentalisms and like the slow, deliberate uh, speech. And even the way she walks is kind of like not how human beings walk. Yeah, it's... Everything's very deliberately done, and her speech pattern is that sing same sing song way that Kathy Bates did it. In. Yeah. So. You know, I was seeing I'm seeing a lot of like uh, conversation online how like oh well this is the young Kathy Bates this is the young Annie Wilts compared to the old Annie Wilts. Right. When Misery came out, Kathy Kathy Bates was only five years older than Lizzie Kaplan is now. <laughs> I mean, all the same age. Right. I mean, but Kathy Bates just played a character who was older. Maybe. Yeah. Do I, you know yeah. that? I mean, no. I was back just thinking, up the facts. I, we're just supposed to assume that. Why? I don't know why. Why don't they? This. Why do you think they'll not the same? I don't age? know. 
I don't know. That's a good question. I think this way they had her dress and stuff. I think we're just I think led to believe. Clothes. I... Maybe. I think we were just led to believe she had lived her life and she had. Well, she also lived in a film, so why? Yeah. Was she... I think we're just the same age. That's crazy. Is it really crazy? It is crazy. It's fucking ludicrous. Oh my god. <laughs> Called that. No, he's a rapper. SWAT team. <laughs> to kill us. <laughs> Uh, we begin with uh, Annie Wilkes running through the woods, holding a box mm-hmm. that says the ravening, ravening, ravening angel. Yes. What does that mean? I don't know. It sounds like the title of a rom- romance novel. It kind of does. It could be the title of a Sidney Sheldon book. Nope. Paul uh, Sheldon. Paul Sheldon book. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the... His were well his were misery misery's daughter yeah. misery's child, child misery's <laughs> love misery's awakening yeah, keep going. i don't know i don't you, know you seem to be a big fan of these books <laughs> well you know it is paul sheldon yeah surprise i'm gonna tie you to the bedpost later and smack your foot in <laughs> oh someone hasn't read the original yes novel. i know it's with an axe Oof. so how does the uh, ravening angel end I don't know. We don't even know if that's a book. No. Inside this box, though, it's like a box of, it's like the, it's like a document box, the that, size yeah. of it. But inside is a baby. Yeah. That we see little hole, like she gets to a rivel, because she's running through the woods lit as the song "Let the Rivel Run" plays. Right. Which is the title of the episode. <gasps> so she gets to the end of the rivel and she takes out a little baby and she holds it above the waddle. But we don't really see if she uh, drowns it or not. No, we have no idea what she does with this baby. <sighs> Maybe she's just washing the baby off. I don't think so. I don't think so either. She probably drowns the baby. Maybe maybe that's her daughter. Maybe it is, yeah. Maybe it's not even uh, biologically related. Maybe she took Ellie Fischel from the hospital. Could be. Because much like the novel Mizzle, Annie Wilkes is also a nurse. And a... Uh, a crazy one at that. Well, same as the novel. I know. She's a, she has a lot of mental disorders going on. Mm-hmm. And since she's afraid of, you know, losing her kid and uh, losing her chance to work in hospitals... Yeah. She hides this from people, and she's come up with a certain, in, like, extreme dose of antipsychotics that she just smuggles from hospitals, and she kind of calms down the uh, nuttiness. Yeah. It was, like, Xanax and Halidol and lithium, I think. And lithium was involved. Yeah. Perhaps also uh, Neville Mind. <laughs> what? <laughs> It's an Obama joke. Oh. With the end. I got it now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so when this is beginning, uh, we we have this, like, as she's running through the woods, we're getting a montage that keeps uh, intersecting with this of Annie and well, a teenage Donald driving, like, going on a road trip right. across the country. And um, they keep uh, switching the license plates out. Right. Somebody takes her picture at one point in time and she says, can you please delete it? They take a photo of a license plate because I guess they'll scavenging honey. They'll scavenge honey. Right. They'll scavenging honey. Scavenger. No, that's not the verb. Doesn't they'll scavenge all honey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't slept in a while, folks. Uh, they'll hunting. Yes. For a, uh, a license plate in every state. I don't care what the fuck you'll do. You don't just walk up to, to somebody and take a photo of the license plate. Right. You want to get shot? Exactly. I mean, my parents and I used to play that game, but we wouldn't take pictures you don't walk of anything. Up and take photos no, we would just someone's call. We would mark it down if we saw the plate. You know, no, look, that's New completely Jersey. different. Right? You don't take photos. No. So she explains that. Oh, we're taking a break from the uh, the internet, internet now. <laughs> She's uh, Canadian, I guess. <laughs> eh? <laughs> <laughs> and I, like but there's a moment where you think oh shit is she about to kill this dude right. but then he uh he caves in and he deletes it and she's all smiles and sunshine after that thank you oh well thank you but then she immediately you it's like a frantic changing of the 
The license, license plate. plates. Yeah, yeah, she has a lot of them. Uh, but we also find out she is uh, on the run be- because she's committed a grave uh, sin. Yes. Homicide. So we're now homicide is when one person kills somebody else is that, intentionally. Is that what it is? Well, I know you will when you ask me. I you, did. I ask you every yeah. day. You like what, Max was homicide. What is homicide? While holding a knife. <laughs> It's a hand that's shaking. I don't really know what's going on with I'm that. P- pumpkin carving. Uh, pumpkin carving. <laughs> yes. Uh, don't talk to me about pumpkin carving. <laughs> I don't like pumpkin carving. It's a pain in the ass. It's not great. I just did one for your son of Darth yes. Vader. It does not look like Darth Vader. It does it, not look like anything. It looks now, fine. all I know is my fingernails are in pain. Well, I sorry. tried Googling. Uh, Pumpkin pain? <laughs> well, specifically, pain under the fingernails after, like, ripping the guts out from a pumpkin. Because every Halloween after I do this, for, like, a week after, I'm just in pain. And what did you find out from your Nothing. fabulous no, Google No one research? else has Googled this. <laughs> Nobody? <laughs> Nothing. I just got a bunch of, uh... I forget now. <laughs> Was it a bunch of weird stuff that you don't want to repeat on here? I mean... I did have my safe silch off. <laughs> and I do have some ideas I will explore with you later. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but we will have to go buy, have to buy a, uh, a custom uh, carving kit. Oh, okay. And a stencil <laughs> of Tom Hanks. <laughs> but I do like how, like, the, the main, the uh, inciting incident of this episode and i guess the whole season is annie is trying to find some meds right and she looks away and she crashes in the castle rock surprise but it's it's like a reversal of the insetting incident of misery right because the same thing happens to uh not sydney paul, paul sheldon <laughs> i always want to say sydney no so after this wreck of annie and the kid Flipping the vehicle over right past the uh, Castle Rock sign. We go f- uh, one week later and uh, we get kind of introduced to all of the characters. We get int- introduced to uh, Pop. How do you say it? Pop Merrill. Oh, you didn't say it correctly. No, oh, you <laughs> fucked up already. I know, I'm sorry. Who is played by uh, Tim Robbins. Yes. But he's fooling with a camera inside the Imaginarium Emporium. Is that what it's no, called? No, it's not. It's not. It's the... Uh, Imperium Galorium. The Emporium Galorium. In Surprise. Constant readles and listeners will know that this is taken directly from the Sun Dog. Right. Which we did an episode on, I don't know, in the last couple months or so. Yeah, I think back in June, maybe. Oh, well, that was a couple and months ago. If you're listening to this episode in the future, it will still be back in June. <laughs> It'll still be a f- couple of months ago. <laughs> so, I mean, anyone who uh, is familiar with the sun dog, uh, the whole premise still is that uh, there's a spooky magic camera. And when you take a photo, a little black dog is in the background. And right. it's getting closer and closer. Now, if you look at the, photogra- the photographs he's holding... Like, later, a lot later. Later on in the episode, on the second photograph, you do see a black dog in the background, like, to the left. It is. It's very faint and it's very small but it it was there it definitely was there max made me go back three times to find it (laughs) the problem is we watched things with subtitles and they kept blocking it out right yet i was able to see it just fine i know it's almost like you should watch things oh shut up the glasses you own that's not they're not for watching they're for reading (laughs) oh do you how do you read the book do you uh maybe look at the page so you watch the yes, page? Do you yes, watch the but rules? Yes, but they're yeah, different. If yeah. I put my glasses, I won't be able to see the TV. <laughs> uh, how do you, uh, what do you do with subtitles? Do you uh, watch subtitles or do you read subtitles? Typically, I try not to pay attention to the subtitles. Oh, my God. Well, originally, when they were driving through, I really thought... They? Yes, Annie and her daughter. And she was, like, not paying attention to the road. I wondered if she was going to run over somebody. Yeah. I really gave that some thought. Who? Maybe Paul Sheldon. <laughs> you think Paul Sheldon's going to get into this? Uh, I don't think so. I don't so. think so. But We it, didn't get any real uh, sign of Ms. Oil or no, anything like that. No, except the for book, the... The episode. Except for her 
mannerisms and the fact that she's a nurse stealing from a hospital. No, I'm talking about the actual fictional book. Yeah. Missouri. What? I know that. No. Oh, I see what you're saying. The book within the book. The book within the, the book. Series. Sorry. Yeah, we don't get any Sheldonisms. Sheldonisms? No, not yet. I wonder if, like, the last episode of the season, she's gonna like stumble across a like a bookstool and see one of one of them. Right. Go, oh, this looks good. Or start reading them, or and something. And that'll be like yeah. the final scene. Yeah. Assuming she lives. We don't know. Which who knows? Because by as we will uh, discover in just episode one. Who the fuck knows who's gonna live? I know. So yeah, we get this. We get to see Tim Robbins. He's fiddling with a uh, a, a possibly haunted camera, right? And of course, he uh, just like in the Sun Dog, he keeps his money in a Crisco can. Mm-hmm. But this Crisco can seems to just be on his desk with that lid. Out, with that yeah, lid. it's just like all oh, hey, my money's over there. You know where it's at. Yeah, <laughs> it's like okay, anybody could walk up and just take the money out of this can. <laughs> it's not a great hiding space. No, uh, it's like the way you hide money by just leaving it yeah, on the well, kitchen counter. Nobody's gonna steal it, so until it happens, yeah. who's gonna steal it? You will fall too trusting. <laughs> Are you stealing it? Now we have random boys just showing up at the house. I don't know what the hell is the deal with that. I am not gonna provide any little context <laughs> to anyone who might be listening. <laughs> But you do have a son, and he does have a, a does have acquaintances yes. uh, popping up to play video games suddenly. I don't like it. Well, you know. I don't like it. You don't have to let them in. The, he ate every Oreo we own. <laughs> that little fucking shithead. Uh, I don't even like Oreos, but it's the principle. <laughs> it's the whole principle. <laughs> what a piece of shit. I hate kids. <laughs> Speaking of kids I hate, I did not like any of the kids in this episode at all. There was the thing that I have discovered, and that kids should not act in movies. A lot of times. TV shows, because they suck. A lot of times. And they ruin everything. And there's a, like a gang of children in this, what do you call this? It's not a trailer park. It's, it's not like a hotel. A, it's not a hotel. It's like... A, a series of cabins yeah, I don't that know you can what rent. It is. It's like a commune or something (laughs) without being a commune yeah it's It's like a trailer park without the trailers is what it's like it's almost like an apartment yeah i don't know it's it's a series of cabins that you can rent for an extended amount of time yeah and there's a bunch of kids like five of them who have like just become friends who hang out and they do something called a Freak time, which involves just throwing cans at a roof. Yeah, and it was weird. It was like an observatory roof. It was, it was like a greenhouse. <laughs> I, yeah, it was like how you know you go to the observatories and it's like that circular thing it where they like, opened up. It <laughs> looked like the giant metallic head of a robot's dick. There you go. Maybe it was. Maybe there's a robot under Castle Rock. But I mean, it's so obviously trying to give you that uh, it will yeah. stand by me nostalgia. Right. Nostalgia law. Nostalgia. Thank you. I feel like even fucking. It's also this girl. She's uh, like the, the head of the pack. I don't know. Uh, Chance, her name is. Her name is Chance. Yes. She has the same heel cut and dresses the same as fucking Will Wheaton. Yeah. And Stand By Me, it's really off, off-putting and odd. Yeah, that whole entire section was like, okay, I could have done without that. And every single line is so awkward. And it's like, I don't... I've, I know this already. I know how this is going to play out. We have Strange Little Things. <laughs> right. <laughs> we have Stand By Me. We have It Chapter 1. It Chapter 2. It the miniseries. It the book. Whoa. It. <laughs> W-O-H. Which is the Indian knockoff mm. of It. <laughs> That's the real thing. I know. I you made me watch it. <laughs> or at least parts of it. We should do an episode on it. Uh, but also we have Ace, who is running this uh this, right, it's this. called the Stargazer Lodge, and okay. and I was trying to think if Stargazer appears in anything else, Castle Rock wise, or Stephen King wise. I mean, the name sounds so familiar, but it may be just because it's one of those generic. I think it's the name. I think it's a Bowie song. Well, I'm we'll going down to the Stargazer town. Oh, I no. <laughs> I don't know. I just I wondered if it was in something else. 
If you know, email us, please. Don't email us. No one's gonna. <laughs> no one checks the email. Do you check? Every email? once in a blue moon. No one checks the email. I have never checked it. Well, that's your own fault. That's both of all faults. Is it? Yeah, but Ace he runs this, but he has a, a an adopted step brother who right. is a Somalian, right? Named oh, Aldi. Aldi. Who? Oh, Abdi. I'm sorry. Abdi. Okay, he is running. What? What is he? In, well, what is he doing? Explain all this. He's okay. So Ace is going around town and he's collecting money from his quote unquote like le- tenants. Tenants, like, and it's almost like you get the feeling of like mobsters how they collect money from the townspeople to keep them safe. The, yeah. But um, Abdi is building a extortion. new extortion. Yes, like an extortion. But Abdi's building like a new mall on the edge of town. Mm-hmm. And he's stealing all the tenants. He's building it on Jer- Jer- Jerusalem's lot. Yes, he is. Which evidently is next to the castle, right? That's what it looked like. And if they showed a map at one point in time, and it was like Jerusalem's lot, a river, and then Chris- Castle Rock. Yeah. So they're like right next to each other. Go ahead. Keep going. So Abdi's building this mall, and it's like on some sort of sacred ground that he got for super duper cheap. But he's promising all these tenants, like, like decent rent and everything. So all these people that are... He's promising not to be an asshole like yeah, Ace. Yeah, right. So all these people that are right now paying rent to Ace are going to switch to Abdi's mall. Yeah. Now, obviously, Ace is from uh, the body slash stand by me. He, I know he's in Needful Things. Like I think a, so. Yeah, I think he's like a main villain. Yeah, because he's he's, he's, always he's like a middle aged yeah. man and needful things. So doesn't he become like Leland Gaunt's like handyman? I think so. Sounds right. It's I have not read Needful Things in a long a time. Fucking yeah. long time. We should reread it. I like that book. And we could talk about it on a podcast. What? Maybe ghoulish. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Ace Merrill always plays the evil asshole. I mean, he was also a. Th- I don't know what else he was. Was it a short story that we read? Wasn't he that he just played the jerk? I don't know. Either way, he sucks. Yeah. So there's there's this uh, feud going on between Ace and the uh, Abdi. Abdi, thank you. And I was reading Samuel because I thought, well, oh, what's up with this uh, really strong Somalian population in right. Castle Rock? It's uh, it's uh, kind of just uh, referencing. Maine itself, which has suddenly gotten a really heavy Somalian population hmm. recently. Interesting. Which is not, not no, saying it's, it's a negative thing. No, it's, it's just, just interesting. Yeah, because you, th- you think of Stephen King. You don't think of anyone <laughs> besides uh, white dudes. Really white dudes, yeah. <laughs> well, magical black people. <laughs> so, yeah, that was, it's a pretty cool way to uh, get some diversity in the cast. Yeah. And the dude who plays uh, Abdi, he's, he's awesome. He's really good. Yeah. He was in something else I saw, and I didn't look it up. Well, now we know. I'm never he, gonna know. But I mean, he's he's he, he's a good actor. Yeah. And uh, what else is going on? <laughs> uh, let me look at my notes. Um. So uh, yeah. So Kathy, no, not Kathy Bates. Any Wilts. Any Wilts. After they crash, the Ace is the one who found them. Right, and offers to replace their car for free. It's, yeah. I mean, to fix their car for free, because there's also the Merrill Auto Yard right there mm-hmm. that Ace and his brother run. Yeah, well, do they say they would fix it for free? Yes. I just know, I know, I know, I, re- I, mean, I he recall towed it for towing free. it for free. Maybe he, they won't fix it for free, but he towed it for free. Yeah. And so that makes Annie suspicious, and she's telling her daughter, don't you ever, you know. no nope. I will now go. Yeah. <laughs> What? <laughs> you agreed. No. I don't know if she's. I mean, I know she's suspicious of Ace. Yes, but I don't know if that's why she's suspicious. It doesn't I think help. She's just someone who is really suspicious of everybody. It could be, but she was like, you know, nobody does anything for free. Yeah, and you watch out. He's a dirty bird. <laughs> he's a dirty bird. And the way she says "dirty bird" is just exactly the same way Kathy Bates it's says it. It's hysterical. Uh, that's what makes me suspicious because it almost sounds like they've like taken Kathy Bates's voice from the movie <laughs> and just like slapped it over. It's such a great it's it's perfect performance. Yeah, it's perfect. I really like uh, Lizzie Ka- Chaplin. Kaplan? Kaplan. Kaplan. Yeah, she was in uh, Freaks and Geeks. I think she was in Mean Girls. She was in Mean Girls. I know that. She might have been in Freaks and Geeks. It's highly possible. 
Everybody was in Freaks and Geeks. Everybody was in Freaks and Geeks. <laughs> if you look back at that Wikipedia, <laughs> it, the list is endless. It's every single person in Hollywood. Even, That's uh, crazy. Yeah, even... <laughs> Not being honest. <laughs> you believe me, he'll I don't know. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, me. if you look, you'll see everybody. You'll see uh, Chapman. Chaplin. <laughs> Kaplan? No. <laughs> no, the, the fucking... The, the, the mime. Oh, Charlie Chaplin? Yeah. <laughs> he was a mime, right? <laughs> sort of. You'll see Steamboat Willie. Everybody. Everybody. Was on... <laughs> What's the show? <laughs> Freaking Freaks Geeks. Geeks. <laughs> the thing is, we're doing this episode, and I have been awake since the day before. Yes, yes. And I don't know how to think thoughts. Yeah, well, that so happens. They'll stay in, so they uh, they pay some rent to stay in this cabin. Right. Did you see what cabin it was? No, I'm sure. Cabin 19. 19. And as we know, 19 is quite significant. In the Stephen Kingvilles, is all a name for the, the, the Kingvilles, or the, is that just it? The Kingverse, I don't know. Okay, the Kingdom. Ha! <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. You couldn't resist. <laughs> that. I bet there's some fucking what? What's going on? This witch guitarist. Uh, I, yeah, I don't. So this mm-hmm. lady, the the Will Wheaton knockoff. She's uh sitting Chance. out. Yeah, she's sit. She's sitting out on a stoop, next to uh the 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 Wilkes's cabin. Right. And she's playing a guitar about witchcraft. She's playing. She's writing a song about witches, because she's convinced that the ground that they're on is a witch burial ground. Well, that yeah, that's which a, is fine. Yeah, I mean that's like. Oh uh, yeah, it's fine to just kill witches and bury them in the ground. Yes, no, I mean it's like a legitimate statement. Yeah, that there probably is witches buried there. Yeah, but it's like so. Uh, Ellie Fischel, I don't know what her name is in this. Joy, Some, Joy, uh, she comes out even though her mom is told not to leave the cabin under any circumstances. She talks to who I think is going to become a Leventrist. Yeah, I'm wondering. I think we're going to do some stuff. Uh, and she's like, yeah, I'm, I'm singing a song to witches. <laughs> yeah. She's like, like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> no, one, no, like one li- no one likes so- no one likes anyone who's playing a guitar. <laughs> Unprompted. <laughs> you will walk around in public and someone's just sitting there playing a guitar. And you're doing like, hey. Snow Patrol kevels. <laughs> snow Patrol. <laughs> yeah, we, used to, we went once to this place in, San, in downtown San Antonio. It's a uh, laundromat slash a color wash slash a restaurant pub. Yeah. Yeah, restaurant. And they just had some dude playing Snow Patrol Cuddles. <laughs> it's a very and, like, odd he place. Would, it's like he would do a song and go, okay, any requests? No? I guess I'll play some Snow Patrol. <laughs> and then after, he would go, okay, any requests? No? But he wouldn't even give anyone any room. He would just go, any requests? No? I get, I'll, am I hitting Snow Patrol? I'll play some Snow Patrol. It just went on. Just fucking I didn't know there maniac. was so many Snow Patrol songs. I only know one song. I'm called, a... and it's called uh, How to Be Dead. I don't even know you that know what? song. It's a pretty good song. <laughs> That's the only song I know. Despite healing, like, the well, entire dis- uh, disc- say, disc- Yeah, 30 that night. <laughs> yeah. I don't even think he played How to Be Dead. It was like a pretty good song. Uh... <laughs> Uh, Am I feeling Snow Patrol? <laughs> I can play some Snow Patrol. <laughs> well, Annie has left the cabin because she obviously is in need of drugs because she's withdrawing really yeah, bad. Yeah, so she's going to apply at the local hospital. Right. And she's sitting down and she's like, I hear you have temporary nurse positions open. He's like, sure. So she gives him a copy of her birth certificate and she's immediately hired. And it's a photocopy too. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it's like, okay, wouldn't you have to like research her RN license? <laughs> do a background check? At least submit INS paperwork? <laughs> Listen, this is Castle Rock. Last year, the fucking devil came to town. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> and now I don't think this show is entirely separated from the from the like previous seasons because at one point someone said something like yeah in this town anything happens. Recently uh, yeah. a kid just vanished yeah, from kids vanishing yeah, and... those massacres going on. I mean that has to be a reference yeah. to the previous season. I would assume so. And I mean that would only make sense that somewhere somebody would know something about you know what happened in there previously. I don't think they could ignore it. 
Well, I mean, it, Castle Rock isn't a big town. It's not that big of a town. So I don't know. It's odd because if it, if all that shit did happen, that's what everybody would be talking about still. Yeah, maybe. You telling me if a, the fucking devil came to Cibolo, Texas, we would be talking about Stephen King right now? We might be. No, we wouldn't. We'd be saying, oh, fuck, wasn't that crazy when that devil came to town and kept playing Snow Patrol Kevils? <laughs> it was like, just take us to hell, Satan. He's like, oh, I have to listen to Snow Patrol song. Wait, I gotta sing another Snow Patrol song. <laughs> Practicing for the Battle of the Bands. <laughs> Do you think they'll battle the bands in hell? I, I don't know. I mean, that has to be what hell is. <laughs> the battle of the bands. <laughs> or at least parking for battle of the bands. So when the kid, jo- Joy, goes out and talks to the uh, Will Wheaton knockoff, that's when she introduces uh, Joy to the rest of these annoying-ass kids. Right. And we mostly just meet them, so they can we can just... uh, find out, ooh, Joy doesn't, isn't allowed to have a cell phone, and they all think that's really odd. Yes. And then, so she's, like, not sure she should join in. Kind of. I'm calling it right now. They will become great old friends, and as a as a group, they will investigate something supernatural going on in Castle Rock, and they will do this while riding bicycles. You think? <laughs> well, this is a model one, though, so they might be riding those like, uh, <laughs> rental scooters. Scooters. <laughs> have suddenly just popped up all over the place. Uh, yeah, and you know... This is a conspiracy, right? It, some, type thinking, of, some type of uh, Mandela effect? I don't know. I know there was a big thing, like, recently that they're probably going to remove the ones from San Antonio. Yeah, but when did they come? I don't know. And you know what's crazy is, like, because I work in downtown San Antonio, yeah. like, every once in a while when I'm, like, pulling into the parking lot at work, and I don't work, like, right downtown. I'm, like, a little bit away. There's, like scooters on the sidewalk it's like i never see anyone fuck, riding them man. they're always just laying on the sidewalk yeah. it's, i'm pretty sure if you go on it you disappear maybe maybe that's what everybody's going i don't know i just find it really weird or like when i'm driving home there's like scooters all over everywhere it's like the fucking climate the world, change man it's just weird it's to global me. warming the sidewalks aren't that big in San Antonio. There's no room for scooters and people. No one is riding these scooters. <laughs> Where do they come from? I don't and know. And why? What do they want? <laughs> they want no snow patrol. <laughs> That's actually how you, uh, you rent one. You have to sing it. Sing snow out. patrol. <laughs> yeah. I'm fucked then. Yeah. Uh, so back to uh, Joy. No. Annie Wilkes. Yes. Who's immediately gotten this job in the hospital and has begun work that day. Yeah, like, no training at No all. training, no. She's just immediately helping. Yes. It's like it's fucking Vietnam and they need, like, medic stats. <laughs> it might be. I don't know. It's Castle Rock. Maine. Maine? <laughs> but it, she sees, the like, the patient board and immediately, like, rearranges it. <laughs> yeah, she shouldn't be in charge of any of this. No. Also, throughout this episode, she is haunted by uh, type rattle keys click clacketing. Yeah, it's like anytime her um, disorder gets out of control, yeah. we hear the typewriter clacking. So that gives me, like, thoughts like, okay, so did this Paul Sheldon shit already happen? Maybe. Like, well, yeah, I mean, is that why? She, is that who she killed? She killed somebody. Yeah. I mean, in the book and the movie, she, she killed many babies. Yeah. So you think, so you would assume that's what's going on. Maybe she just killed somebody else. I mean, we never actually saw her kill a baby. She did hold one up in right, an ominous don't... way, but we didn't see a baby die. Right. So there's so many unanswered questions here. Which... What the fuck? How come they didn't answer all the questions yeah. in the first episode? Yeah. But yeah, not only will we, is she being haunted by this click clacketing, there's also a tall man... Who yes. keeps asking, uh, do you like it? Right. Which, did you like it? Did you like it? Yeah. Which, again, is kind of like a, it's kind of like a Paul Sheldon thing, because didn't he ask all that after he wrote that new book? Oh, yeah, I think so. Did you like it, Annie? Yeah. But, I mean, this guy's, like, bleeding from his eyes. <sighs> wow, well, yeah. And I don't know, it's kind of crazy you have looking. You from your eyes? No, I can't say that I have. Oh. <laughs> but, I mean, it's, I, it's kind of giving us the impression that he like raped her or touched her inappropriately that's okay. the feeling i got yeah. from that and that's part of the reason that she's 
Gonsk Schizo? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, she's haunted by him, so obviously something's happened there. When she's off her meds. When she's yeah. off her meds, yeah. yeah. But then she gets to this hospital, and she, of course, takes this job because she wants to steal the medication. But guess what? It's all locked up behind a cage. All the medication. I thought you said Nick Cage. <laughs> I don't think Nick Cage has anything like, to do with I know, with this. I'm tired. I don't remember any of that. <laughs> Just Nick Cage is standing me yes. in front of a shelf. Up. Up. I, need okay. a, I need a key. Which is actually like more realistic to how hospitals work than just having medication open to everybody. What are you talking about? Well, like I know when, when Dylan was in the hospital and Little needed son. medication. Yeah. Not only did they have to scan the medication bottle, but then they had to immediately scan his wristband yeah. to get it to get the the medication thing to even open. That makes sense. So like Nobody could just randomly take medication. Okay. I had to go yeah, somewhere. that's a good idea. I know it's a good idea. That's why they do it. I thought you were telling me what they have was a better idea. No, I'm saying oh. it's more realistic that it's locked up than it would be for her to just be able to walk into a medication room and take medicine. It's even more realistic that the technology fucking sucks. <laughs> yes, because the, the, the keypad <laughs> never works on it and you need a key to bypass it. And which, of course, is uh, handled by Abdi's sister. Yes. Ace's stepsister. Yes. And Merle's pop's pop <laughs> stepdaughter. It's really fucking confusing. It's like yes. a, this show is definitely a soap opera. Yeah. There's a lot of pulpy uh, stuff in this uh, season as opposed to last season, just from the first episode, and I dig it a lot. Uh, I agree with that. Abdi is sleeping, I almost said with his sister. <laughs> Uh, on at his sister's house. Uh, yeah. I don't know what the deal what the deal is with all that, but he's been staying on the couch lately. So he, uh, he comes home the night that uh, Annie Wiltz decides to break into that specific house to try and find the key called to get into the med cabinet. Right. And as she, uh, as both of them are in the house, un, uh, she, the uh, Abdi doesn't even know she's in the house. Right. Ace decides to uh, drive up with a bunch of Molotov oh. cocktails oh, just... and whips it through the window. Right. This is one fucked up family. <laughs> it's pretty fucked up. Can you imagine? Now, let me just bomb yeah. my stepbrother. I mean, I've thought about doing that. Okay, I'll give you. That. Uh, we've my siblings have probably done bills to each other. <laughs> See previous episodes. I'm sure I've <laughs> talked about it. Uh, Annie Wilts uh, escapes without anyone seeing that right. she's around. Right. And she, but, you know, Abby is trying to pull out all these files. But he does see Ace drive away in his truck. Right. All because of just this, this feud going on. Yeah, about land and yeah. tenants and stuff. It's kind of crazy. So, uh, but my it's next yeah. question is, is okay, there's only one key card that opens this medical dispensary and Dr. H keeps leaving it at her house. Well, how the fuck are they treating the patients if well, nobody they, can get the medication out? Well, they also said security could open it. Okay. But I mean, still, that seems kind of ridiculous. It seems like, why wouldn't you keep the key card? Why wouldn't you replace the fucking key mm, magnet? Yeah. Or why isn't the key card made to stay like at the main nurse's station or something so they can get to the medication if it's needed? Yeah, like even at my hotel, which is not a hospital. You have to sign out the key you take. Right. And then when you leave, you sign it back in. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense that <laughs> you leave the keys there. <laughs> I, I don't know. Because what happens? I mean, she's not on call. She's not there 24-7. <laughs> it seems like she is. It seems like she is. But she can't be the only doctor at this hospital. Not a doctor. <laughs> uh, Annie goes to the hospital and she gets busted almost immediately by Dr. H. Mm-hmm. She's trying to steal meds. Right. She's mm. like, who are you stealing it? So we go, we go, she accuses her of stealing uh, Oxycontin, and Annie goes, no, I'm actually fucking crazy, and I need these antipsychotics, so I'm gonna fucking kill my daughter or something. Right. And she gives her the whole spiel of, like, why she can't seek medical treatment, and what type of dose she figured out. Was enough to control her uh, psychotic tendency, tendencies, right. and uh, and surprisingly, Dr. H is okay with it, and she she uh, she gives all the medication. Right. Well, and she even says, if we all took a little more lithium and a less oxycontin, the world would be a better place. 
Yeah. Mm, maybe we should all take lithium. But she agrees to prescribe the medications to Annie properly. And she says, I need to make a couple changes how, to the dose. But how is she uh, getting these pres- prescriptions I don't uh, know. fulfilled if she's even using a fake name? Yeah, I don't know. She must have a fake ID, obviously. I would assume so. And she has a fake uh, bill certificate. She probably has a fake driver's right. license. But Ace knows that she's not who she says she is because he knows the VIN number and the license plate don't match up. Right. And we, uh, and he confronts the old label that night. Right. Because, uh, before, early all that day, she was Googling Annie Wilkes on the, uh, Lodge's Wi-Fi, and he was able to see what she was typing. Yeah. Is that a thing? I don't know. Maybe if you have only, like, one mainframe server, I really don't know. I don't know if that's a thing you I don't know do. if that's a, th- it, there probably is, but I wouldn't think a Lodge like this would be able well, to do that. Well, he is a fucking psychopath so oh, well, he yeah. might have rigged it somehow <laughs> it's just to possible. be able to blackmail his uh tenants could I mean, be it makes sense so he yeah. goes and goes oh hey should i call you annie wilts and he's like you old dud will sell some shit she shouldn't have seen because she uh, witnessed the uh, ace propelling his uh molotov cocktails right and they get into it a little bit and uh <laughs> We get into a really good fucking death. This is like the most awesome death ever. All of a sudden, Annie Wilkes takes an ice cream scoople and drives it down his throat. Right. And she keeps punching it until it goes throughout the other side. It's pretty crazy. It's so surprising and shocking <laughs> and, and, and hilarious. <laughs> I, 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 at that point, I went, holy shit. <laughs> I went, oh my God. And then what, what did you do? I, I think I said, holy shit. <laughs> and then I went, oh, huh. What, what did you do at lunch? I, I don't recollect. I think I went, hmm. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of crazy because she, <laughs> he's like choking on the floor and she just keeps slamming the her hand into the back of the ice cream scoop. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it. it no, it, it was very uh, violent, It too. definitely woke me up. Yeah. <laughs> it was like very I, violent. Like I was saying, this, this episode is super pulpy. Yeah. As opposed to last season. I don't know. Maybe that one was also kind of pulpy. It's possible. I don't know. I'll wait till you decide. Oh, well, thanks. I'm not deciding right this second. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so she takes the body next door to Salem's Lot. Right, to all the Obdi's property. Obdi's property, yeah, because there's a big uh, construction zone right, right. now. All these, uh, like a big pit, basically, where they have been dig- digging. And, like, rumors, we have been told, like, what, 300 years ago or some shit, witches lived in this land? Yes. So instead of vampires, we're dealing with witches, witches. supposedly. And she begins to uh, dig a hole to stick in uh, Ace. Mm-hmm. Pretty crazy. Episode one, Ace is dead. Right. But she is digging a hole to bury him in a haunted ground. So, I mean, that's not a good sign for anything to come. No. And you also think, well, maybe he's going to, maybe, you know, sometimes, Resurrection, sometimes yeah. dead is a pedal. Reincarnation sometimes, of sword. Sometimes uh, bread needs a pedal. <laughs> sometimes it does. <laughs> uh, but as she's digging, uh, she collapses. And, like, underneath this gr- this dig site, it's just this big... Like, cavern. Cavern, yeah. Yeah. And, like, millions of bats come flying out. And that's right. how the episode ends. So right. I'll mean, we, we'll be dealing with vamps. Vamp Could pals. be. I mean, we are in Salem's Lot. Salems. Salems. <laughs> Lot. Uh, yeah, that's how it ends. And that's Ta-da. A, that's a cool way to end the episode. It was. Uh, I... Final thoughts? I, I want to see what happens next. I want to yeah. know how the hell she gets out of the pit without anybody catching her. Maybe she's dead. I don't think so. Maybe she had the ice cream scoop in her pocket. And as she was falling, it fell out of the pocket and landed like straight up, but then it went through her mouth through her as well. Mouth? I don't think that's happening. It would make a good Pez dispensal. <laughs> Ace's head. <laughs> uh, I would love Castle Rock themed ice cream scoopables. So somebody get on that. Yeah, get on the phone with the Brials. <laughs> that's the only ice cream company I can think of. Yeah, it works. Blue Ice. That's Blue Bell. Blue Bell. But I think that's only a Texas thing. It is. Briles. Briles is pretty international. Uh, ben and Jerry's. Yeah. 
those guys. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Two people can just make ice, so much ice cream. <laughs> Do you think they're in the back right now just churning up ice cream? I think so, yeah. <laughs> that would be an amazing, like, uh, dramatic movie. <laughs> but, like, told in the same way as uh, There Will Be Blood. <laughs> I mean, they really would drink each other's milkshake. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, uh, That's the episode. I I liked it okay. I found the kids annoying. I thought it was kind of too much of a coincidence for um, uh, Annie and Abdi and Ace to meet up at that house. Yeah. It was like, ah, come on, really? I know. But I understand it from the let's... We gotta get rid of him somehow. We, we gotta get shit moving. Yeah. Um, I wasn't really a fan of anything going on with Ace or Pop or uh, all the the little uh, Somalian siblings. Yeah. I was I was anytime Annie was on, on was present, I was paying attention. Right. Besides that, I was like, yeah. Well, it's like I think it'd have been fine if they had not been brothers. I, mean, no, I like little brothers. I just found it uninteresting. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out how they're related. I mean, I guess we'll find out later how he ended up with. They they said he was adopt, adopted somehow. Okay. I don't know. I didn't I didn't catch that part. But so. we haven't seen the parents. Right. We've only seen the uncle. Right. Mm-hmm. Who is uh, Tim Robbins? Yes. Um, I like the casting of Tim Robbins because, like, say last season, we had someone from a. We had a what's uh, what's her name? Uh, Sissy's basic. Yeah, who was a famous Stephen King right. actual actress, and then we have Tim Robbins in this one, who was right. famous for playing a uh, Andy Dufresne. Andy Dufresne, yeah, mm. who uh, was great at doing taxes. Apparently, and you we, over uh, if you, I, I was gonna get into how we uh, met a kid cosplaying as Andy Dufresne, mm. but we talked all about that in the previous episode. We uh, did the uh, Castle Rock call. Right. So go listen to that if you haven't. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, that's all I got to say about uh, Castle Rock season two, episode one. Yes. Any other little things? Mm, not that I can think of. How do you think the, this uh, series will end? I don't know. I'm, I mean, it could go several different ways. Okay. It depends on, like you say, the time frame of when she meets Paul Sheldon. Because I mean, we will not... is it before or is it after? You why know? do we have? Why are we assuming it's going to happen at all? Well, and that's possibly true, too. I just have a feeling it's going to play in somehow. Maybe. I mean, they've already established, I mean, with this show, it's not really following the plot yeah. of anything. It's just kind of using some of the themes and remixing them into something new, which is pretty cool. It is. Uh, so let's hope they don't fuck it up. Here, here's God, some not fucking up. the end of last season? What, well, a, what, yeah. a, colossal, what a colossal mistake. It was a clusterfuck. Hmm. Ugh. So hopefully they don't do the same thing this year. And you can also, uh, if you want to follow us on social media or anything, uh, tweet at us at Castle Rock Cast. You can go to uh, CastleRockCast.com, which is a website that we do. Yes. It has the episodes on it. <laughs> it has the episodes that's on about it. it. Uh, you can uh, please support us on Patreon at Patreon.com slash PMM Publishing. We do uh, t-shirts and stuff. Baby uh, blankets? I don't know. <laughs> There's all sorts of things you can buy. It's at tpublic.com slash user slash PMM Publishing. PMM Publishing. You can also uh, email us at, I don't know. CastleRockCast at gmail.com or visit us on Facebook. Yeah. Um, our castle it's castle rock radio for fans of stephen king podcast and dick jokes yeah now uh, you know rate review us on the places that you do those things and uh how do we usually end this show what's my famous quote you have a famous quote yeah what's my famous quote goodbye oh yeah goodbye <laughs> Monkey, 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 monkey